All right, chapter 19, if you would stand with me for the reading of the Word of God, I'd like for you to think about just stepping out of the shadows, stepping out of the shadows with God. And a lot of folks today, they're uh, just, just kind of stepping back and they're saying, well, I, I, I really need this or I really need that. You know, and you know, I, I wish God would just really, sometimes we, we pray and it seems like our prayers don't never get no higher than our knees or the top of our head maybe. Have you ever felt like it? We pray and it seems like God just don't hear us. And we just, we just can't uh, get, get through. But let's, let's read this. And Elijah here is, is praying unto God. And he's, he's agonizing, but Elijah is in trouble with himself. He just seems like nobody just don't care. And uh, he's just feeling alone. And he's got a, he's got a problem, and he don't know how to solve it. And he said, and Ahab told Jezebel, oh my Lord, here he, Ahab is a, a man that is totally lost. He is never been saved. Now I'm not talking about lost in the wilderness or lost out somewhere, but he's lost without God. And Jezebel, his wife, is totally lost without God. They've never known God. Here is a family that knows God not. So Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done. And with all how he hit, he had slain all the prophets with a sword. We'll explain in just a minute. Then Jezebel sent a message unto Elijah saying, here he sent a message to the preacher now. Here this woman is now. All right, saying, so let the gods do to me and more also, if I make not thy life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he saw when he saw, now when the preacher saw, when Elijah saw, he said he saw that he arose and went for his life. Here he's scared of the woman. Boy, he took tail and run. That's the best way I know to put it. Boy, he lifted up his coat tail, tied it around his waist, and he took off. Boy, here he is afraid of this woman. And he came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree, and he requested for himself that he might die. Now here he is, he's talking to God but he's talking kind of stupid. All right, and then he said, and he requested for himself that he might die, and he said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, and I am not better than my, thy, my father's. And as he lay and slept under the juniper tree, tree, behold, then the angel touched him and said unto him, arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid down and laid him down again. And the angel uh, came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drank and went in the strength of the meat forty days and forty nights to uh, Horeb. And to the mount of God 
And he came hither into a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said unto him, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous o Lord, for the Lord God of hosts, and the for the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant, thrown down thy altars, and slain thy prophets with the sword and I, even I only, am, am uh, left. And they seek my life to take it away. And he said, go forth and just stand by, up on the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by and the great st strong w wind rent the mountains and break it in pieces and rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind and night to the wind and earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Look at verse 12. And night to the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire, and night to the fire, a still, small voice, Heavenly Father. And Almighty God, God speak to our hearts this morning. God help us step out. Step out, Lord, of the shadows. Help us, Lord, to step out of our hiding place. Help us, Lord, to step out, Lord, and just talk to you as a friend talks to a friend. Lord, help us, God, to speak our heart. Lord, help us do that that's needful in Jesus' name. Amen. You might be seated. Now, here, Elijah. He had went upon the mountain. And here he had stood up there and he had all of Baal, the prophets of Baal, 450 of them. And God hadn't reigned 42 months, three and a half years. Now, I want you to stay with me just a minute now as we get into this. And rained in 42 months. And he got up there and as a fire. And uh, he, he took in, you know the story of how they, he, the prophets of Baal, they danced and done all this year rock and roll stuff around the fire and all this. And he said, just keep a rock and rolling, keep a, a cutting yourself and keep a dancing. Maybe you... Maybe your gods are asleep and all of this. And nothing didn't happen. But old Elijah, he just stepped out and he took and repaired the altar. And he prayed 63 words. You can count them. But he repaired the altar before he ever done anything. And he called on God. and the fire of God, and he poured water, barrels of water. Where did he get the water? God can supply your need today. That was on top of that mountain. Way up there on top. Hadn't rained in three and a half years. But he had barrels of water sitting around there on top of the mountain. I don't know where the water come from. I've read the Bible. I've searched the Bible. I've read commentaries. Nobody else knows where the water come from. But God supplied the water. He poured that water in a trench, all emptied them barrels, around that water everywhere, all the way around it. And you know what happened? He just prayed a simple prayer. He didn't go into all of this year malarkey. He didn't go into all of this to make a show. But he come before God with 63 simple words and the fire of God fell upon that altar and consumed the fire and consumed all of the water around the fire. 
and God honored Elijah. Then God said unto Elijah, said, I'll tell you what I want you to do. I want you to take all 450, but he's got another 400 down yonder, and I want you to go down yonder and slay them, and that makes 850, and I want you to kill every one of them. God said, I don't fool around with sin. I don't put up with it, and I want you to kill every one of them. And Ahab and Jezebel were as filthy or living livers. They lived in sin and loved sin and prospered in sin. Yes, you say, well, God blessed them. No, God didn't bless them. You can have all of the sin you want and you can live in sin all of your life. And friend, listen to me. And this will be all the heaven you'll ever see. This will be all of the luxury you'll ever see because when you die, hell is gonna be your home. It's gonna be your place of eternity. So Ahab comes down, he's got no God to go to, he's got no peace to go to, so he runs, he's henpecked, so henpecked he runs to his wife and he tells her to kill the preacher. Say, hey, the preacher is my problem. He's killed all of my, uh, 400 of my men. And Baal's men, he's killed 450, and he'll, the preacher's gonna kill me. Preacher's my problem. Ain't that what the world's saying today? The preacher's your problem. Get rid of the preacher, get rid of the word of God. Get rid of Christ. Quit preaching the word of God, and that'll be it that will get rid of our problem. But as we get into the word of God here this morning, we need to step out of the shadows and get with God. But as we begin to look at this thing and as we begin to get along with God, look at verse number nine and 10. Now here Elijah was and he, he began to fear man. And he feared for his life and he began to go. And Elijah and God were really on speaking terms. And here and he said, and he came hither unto a cave. He came to a place where he could hide and a place where he could really get out of the, uh, the light of the world, so to speak. And maybe you, there are time and there are a lot of, a lot of time and a lot of places you go back to Genesis in this and you're gonna find where Adam at one time was there and he was at this point. He tried to hide from God. Maybe you've tried to hide from God. And maybe there's a feeling that you're, you're out of the light and you're all right and you think nobody knows about it. Well, friend, God knows about every bit of it. God knows all about you and all about all of it. Well, you feel bad for a little while and you think you've got by with it. Well, you don't get by with it and uh, neither did Ahab and Jezebel get by with it. Stay with me. But the thing about it is when you leave the world outside and you get along with God, I'll tell you right now, things begin to happen. And the things begin to happen on the bright side. But not only that, but God, God was on the top of the mountain. God, God was there and God is there all the way around. Verses 10 and 11, and he said, I have been, I've been jealous for the Lord God of hosts. For the children of Israel have forsaken thy covenant and thrown down the altars and slain thy prophets with the sword and I, even I. 
He said, only am left and they seek my life to take it away. You felt that way, I'm sure. A lot of us have felt that way. A lot of us, we felt, we, we got to the point that nobody is going to church. Nobody that I know is going to church. That's a, the old people are going to church. The old families, the old gray-haired crowd, uh, them old people, that's where, that, that's the church crowd. <laughs> We're in a new day and hey, yeah, I don't have to go to church. Uh, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm 15, I'm 16, uh, I'm 10, uh, hey, I'm 18, I'm 20. Uh, boy, I've got a long life ahead of me. Uh, well, friend, I want to tell you something. Uh, I preach some 16-year-old funerals. Uh, brother, I have been in some 25 uh, and, and some 30-year-old funerals. Uh, I heard on the obituary this morning uh, of a 36 year old uh, 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 lady uh, or young person uh, that they're going to have her funeral. Uh, listen, you don't have to be old uh, to die. Brother, I tell you, when that breath leaves that body, uh, you're going to die into uh, eternity. Uh, you're going to die either lost uh, or saved. Uh, here, uh, Elijah said, uh, Hey, uh, I'm the only one that's serving God. Uh, well, you might feel that way, uh, but brother, God's got a lot of people uh, uh, serving him today. Uh, he's got a lot uh, of young people. Uh, I was witnessing uh, to a young man this week. Uh, matter of fact, Friday, uh, and I went to his home uh, Thursday, uh, and I went back on Friday, uh, and he said, uh, well, preacher, I'll tell it to you just like this. Uh, I got saved uh, two weeks ago, uh, and you know, uh, I just got to tell you uh, uh, how it is. Uh, I want to tell you I've done some uh, terrible things uh, in my life, uh, and I can't do this, uh, and I can't do that, uh, but let me tell you, brother, I begin to tell him, uh, brother, you, there's a lot of things uh, you can do. Uh, you can praise the Lord. Uh, brother, you can live for God. Uh, you can make your life count. Uh, he said, I've not missed church. Uh, uh, you know, uh, since I got saved, uh, but he said, uh, there, I can't explain it, preacher, uh, brother, of what's happened. Uh, can I tell you uh, just what's going on inside? Uh, he said, uh, uh, I just can't go uh, and see them boys uh, that I used to run around with. Uh, I've got no desire uh, to do what I used to do. Uh, I said, glory to God. Uh, brother, that's what happens uh, when uh, uh, the new man comes in uh, and the old man, uh, he dies out. Uh, brother, I'll tell you, yeah, there's a difference in your life uh, when you start uh, uh, living for God. Uh, when the old man dies uh, and the new man comes alive, uh, brother, uh, there's a difference in your life. Uh, there's a difference in your home. Uh, there's a difference in you uh, completely uh, when you step out of the shadows uh, and start walking with God. Brother, what I'm talking about is when you get saved, uh, the old man, uh, he is dead uh, and the past is in the past. Glory to God. Aren't you glad, hallelujah to God, that God can't remember it uh, and you ought to forget it too. Brother, but listen to this. Get back on top of the mountain. Look in verse number 11. And he said, go forth. Go forth, God. You know, when you get saved, God don't say go backwards. Nowhere in the word of God does God say run backwards. He said, but go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. Brother, stand up there on top of the mountain, throw that chest out. When Gene was taken, taken, I was telling some of them this morning. I believe I was telling Dr. Phillips. 
Yeah. <laughs> Said no burn. Well, what are you talking about, nurse and Donna? <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, I was telling when Jean was in therapy, you know, they had her upstairs down there in the uh, wellness center. I'd go up there and I'd walk around uh, and they had a mirror over the fire uh, and they had a bunch of weights. Uh, and boy, I got them big weights. They weighed a pound a piece. And I, I got them in my hands and I stepped up Jake in front of that mirror and I went. <laughs> I thought it's one of them funny mirrors. I, I did, Rick. I thought it's one of them funny mirrors. Boy, I went like that. What was I? That? That, that mirror. Don't look at me, Crystal, like that. <laughs> Boy, I thought it would do something for me. It showed the same me. It didn't change. And I thought about getting a bigger weight, but I afraid I couldn't lift it. But the thing about it, but I had two pounds. But the thing about it was, look at Elijah. He was the same standing on the ground as he was on the mountain in himself. But it was different when he stepped out of the shadows and God took him to the mountain. When he went up on the mountain uh, uh, under God's direction, uh, brother, he saw things different. He saw things different and you'll see things different, uh, sisters and brothers, uh, when you go up on the mountain uh, with God leading the way. And brother, he said in verse number 11, look, uh, he said, go forth. Brother Whitney, this church needs to go forth instead of going backwards. He said, uh, and stand up on the mount, and behold, the Lord passed by. Aren't you glad? Glory to God uh, when God passes by. Well, I don't want God to pass by. I want God, when he comes around, to stop and stay with me. I want him. But he said he passed by. And a great, strong wind. He said, now look, uh, he said uh, a strong wind uh, and he rent the mountains uh, and broke it to pieces and the rocks before the Lord uh, and the Lord was not in the wind. Uh, after the wind, the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. Brother, listen. We say, well, the Lord done this and Lord, I want to tell you something. You might have dreams you might have visions and all of that. But I want to tell you something. That's caused by what you eat. That's a bunch of hogwash. Well, I, boy, I seen God in a cloud. I seen God in this and I seen God in that. And, and all of this year all these pictures and all of these designs and all this your vision. Listen, all of that is a bunch of junk. Listen, God is in heaven today. But one day he's coming back. He's coming back. All these pictures, they say, well, that cross is so sacred to me. I'll tell you it's sacred. The money you spent to buy it, that dude's enjoying his hundred dollars. And you're enjoying a piece of gold or fake gold or whatever it is. But there ain't no God in that cross. That cross is empty today. And the God that hung on that cross is in glory. Brother, that cross is empty. Uh, and that cross you got hanging around your neck is just a figment uh, of your imagination. Uh, there are three crosses across the road. Uh, brother, they're made out of wood by man. Uh, there's no glory. Uh, there's no uh, 
There's no power. There's nothing in that cross. Brother, it's in the blood of the Lamb of God that died upon that cross. It's the blood of the Lamb. Brother, he said not to glory in the things of this world, but he said to praise God that your name is in the Lamb's book of life and glory in that because God's coming back one day. Brother, I can praise him, but God will burn all of old Satan's false promises. And not only that, look in verse number 12. And after the earthquake and the fire, he said a fire. Brother, listen, there are earthquakes everywhere. There are fires everywhere. And brother, listen, and uh, hey, God don't save you by your feelings. Sometimes I feel good and sometimes I feel bad. I felt lost and I felt saved. Eddie, ain't you felt uh, sometimes that God, God, God don't hear your prayer? See, I'm older than her, about 40 years. See, all these young women in here and young men, but the thing about it is, listen, God knows all about you. God knows. And, but the devil will lie to you. And you say, well, boy, I, 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 was, I was caught up in a vision last night. You might have had wild dreams. But God ain't no dreams. But the thing about it is, listen, listen to what he said. After the earthquake, hey, you may be shook up about something. Elvis got all shook up, didn't he? He's all shook up. These mute. All oh, these musicians, uh, they'll get up there and they'll shake and they'll do all this sheer stuff. Why? Because they're all peeled up and they drugged up. Uh, hey, but they'll put on a show uh, and you'll pay hundreds of dollars to go see all this bunch of racket. You can come to the house of God uh, and brother, I tell you, and the Holy Spirit of God will bless your heart and you can get saved and go to heaven and it don't cost you a dime. Brother, but listen. He said, but after the earth, Jesus took your place on Calvary. Brother, when the fire comes, just like in the book of Daniel chapter three, when the Hebrew boys was put in the fire, Jesus was already in there to bring them out. But he wanted Nebuchadnezzar to see the power. God can bring you out. In closing, verse 12. And after the earthquake, a fire. Listen to what he said. A fire. Sometimes God will let you walk up a rough side of a mountain to get you to step out of the shadows. He will put you on the shady side, but you've got to step out of them shadows sometimes. Sometimes you, you need to grab a hold and come around to the other side to where the suns are shining. And not only that, you think about it. God took the fire in all of your stages of life so you wouldn't get burned. God took that fire, but listen for that still small voice. I don't know how it will be, but that small voice will lead you. That small voice will guide you. That small voice, just like I've told you several times, several times, God's voice may come in different ways. Different ways. But when that Holy Spirit of God speaks to that heart, speaks to your your intellectual being, 
You'll know when it's time to come to this altar and accept him. You'll know when it's time as Stephanie comes to the piano. You'll know when it's time. You'll know when it's time. You'll know when it's time. You'll know when it's time to come. Listen for that still small voice. When trials come, we see we are at the end. Then Jesus can work the best. When you've tried everything, when you've tried, you've tried your very best, he said in verse number 12, I want to read the whole verse, and I'm done. He said, and after the earthquake, after, after all the calamities in your life, he said, after the earthquake, but the Lord was not in the fire. The fire the, he said, and after the earthquake of fire, but the Lord was not in the fire, and after the fire, what did he say? A still, small voice. That voice, what was it saying? It was saying, it's time to get saved. It's time to yield your voice, or your body, your soul to God. It's time to step out of the shadows. And the thing here, trust him, just step out. And so it was when Elijah heard it, verse 13, that he wrapped his face in his mantle and that's what he said. He said, and he went out. He just stepped out. He just stepped out of the cave, stepped out of his life. He said, I believe I'll just trust God. I believe I'll just trust his still small voice. He didn't see God. He didn't see a shadow. He didn't see a picture. He didn't see something hanging up there. He didn't see... He didn't see something flash by. He didn't see flashing lights. He didn't hear no more thunder. He didn't see a preacher standing up here with his hands stretched out, a begging, nothing. He went by what he, that little voice inside. That little voice that spoke to him. He just said, had he went out, he just got his, wrapped his coat around him and he said he went out and he stood in the entering of the cave. And behold, there came a voice unto him and said, What doest thou here? What, what are you just, are you just waiting for some great thing to happen? Are you just waiting for something? And he said, Elijah, what are you doing here? He called him by name when that altar is so close. When it's so close. All you gotta do is just come up here and trust me.